All right, bighomie.cc. Yes, sir. What's the word, bro? How you living? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm glad to be here, man. Man, that's what's up. I'm glad to have you, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate so, it. For sure. For sure, man. So for everybody who might not know who you are, can you kind of give them like an introduction to who you are and what you do? It's your boy, BH, man. You know, celebrity bodyguard, rapper, entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Like. A lot of celebrity stars, I'm the person they call when they get when they get treacherous. You feel me? Like when they can't call like a normal security. They gotta call somebody who got reach in the street. They gotta call somebody who can, you know, when they got the uh they got a female passed out in the hotel room and the police on their ass, they gotta call me. You know what I'm saying? People trying to kill them, getting extorted, they gotta call me. That's why I charge a fee, you know what I'm saying? The truth. The truth, the facts. That's what it is. Well, um, the biggest news going on right now is Diddy. Yes, sir. What, what are your thoughts on Diddy? Have you ever worked with Diddy? Have you ever met Diddy? I met him a couple of times. I definitely worked with him. But the, everything everybody said, I've been saying it for years, bro. I've been saying it for years. Like, man, these boys are weird. You feel me? Like, you would go to a party with him. He looking around like, damn, like, a lot of guys kissing each other in here, man. You feel me? What y'all do is y'all business. So you've you been to a party and seen this? Oh, I've seen it firsthand, multiple times. Man. I've seen Dwight Howard in a pink dress, bro. What? I've seen Dwight Howard in a pink dress with two other trans ladies in dresses. They all the same height at a Diddy party. Oh. Ask about Dwight Howard in Mexico. What's up with Dwight Howard in Mexico? You know, they don't got paparazzi out there like that. You feel me? They was down there hooping. He going to the club with these same trans ladies. Nobody saying nothing. That's why he's not in the league right now. You heard about him catching the sexual assault on the little designer dude? Yep. Right. Him... Imagine you got two seven foot tall swole guys in dresses, corner you in a hotel in a bedroom. You finna be scared. Facts. So like, I I distinctly remember going to a Diddy party. All the waitresses topless. They serving you everybody topless. You feel me? Like he got uh, dancers in cages. People walking around with lions on leash, tigers on leashes. I seen this with my own two eyes. You see what I'm saying? And it was getting so weird in the party. I'm like, man, hmm. I tell the security team I'm working with, like, but let me sit outside in the, in the Escalade. So I go outside in the Escalade and I'm just chilling out there because, you know, bro, I got a reputation to maintain, bro, outstanding member. Like, I don't want nobody thinking that, man, they got what, BH with this? That was always a concern for me, bro. That was always a concern. I've seen it for myself because... Bobby Valentino was the person I was bodyguarding there. You see what I'm saying? He tell me, I didn't got so much pussy before. You know, pussy don't even really excite me. I'm like, well, what you mean? But he there. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> On bro, fourth grade. I said, what you mean? So he got two girls with him. So I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, hold on. These might not be normal girls. Sure enough. Now he say, man, take my girl to the bathroom. I'm like, okay. We walk into the bathroom. You feel me? She go into the men's bathroom. But that's that's not all the way crazy, because it's one bathroom packed, you feel me? People might do that. You know what I'm saying? So people start swarming the door. So I step inside the bathroom door. She's standing at the urinal. Dress lifted up. I'm like, damn. Oh, man. Okay, that's how they coming. All right. So, you know, I'm going to tell my, I'm gonna tell everybody this. If you at a celebrity party and them white guys come in like they was on Twilight, look like vampires, they holding their drink like this, you feel me, with the blonde hair, stuff like that, it's finna get crazy in the party now, you feel me? Seen it too many times. When the white guys come in like they was on a vampire movie, bro. Hella jail, spikes sticking up, around a bunch of black dudes. Yeah, somebody finna get their cakes touched on, bro. 
But 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 here another thing though, like I, I bodyguard this guy who was a pimp before, and he told me, he said, Look, if a man have too much of one thing, he start trying other things. So as soon as I heard that, I went celibate for like two years. Cause I ain't even trying to have like, bro, I think a lot of things is evil, bro. And in the music industry, you see a lot of things that's evil. And they'll tell you you crazy because you don't agree with it. I seen this. All of this stuff that's coming out, I've been saying it, bro. I've been saying it. That's why I start taking gigs and I'm bringing the guys with me because it's like, all right, I don't want to be the only straight guy in here. See what I'm saying? Then at the same time, if something happens, if you on a team with like five security dudes, they might be seven feet tall, but they they five feet tall in their heart. Well, they, a lot of them be soft, scary. They not gangster at all. Like they gonna run and leave you and call the police. Like they not gonna shoot no gun, bro. Name one time you heard about a security guard, a bodyguard shooting somebody. Uh, Snoop Dogg's bodyguard. That was twenty years ago. That's why you hear all the rappers saying, "I don't need no bodyguard." You hear that in every song. That's why. That's why I charge what I charge. Cause you get me. Me and phone them coming out. And half the time, people know not to try us. So we don't really have to do nothing. But like, I've worked with people, dudes like, like that dude Kane Kong, he big, but he'll knock you out. But most dudes not doing that. They get knocked out or calling 12. Uh, back to the Diddy thing. What was your actual interactions with Diddy like? So my interactions with him was this. He had a he had an appearance at this club called The Vibe in Chicago on Kingsbury when it was open. I was head of security of this club. So after that club closed, after the night was over, he had an after party. So the manager of the club said, I need you to come with me to the after party. So me and my other homie, we go to the after party. When we get to the after party, bro, like, it was a lot of females in there who, uh, who stand up when they use the bathroom. You see what I'm saying? So I'm thinking to myself, like, man, like, this is this, this kind of wild on, bro. Like, this how y'all come. That's how, if this how y'all live, this how y'all live. But they want to keep it a secret. You see what I'm saying? So he real touchy Philly, too. Like, he grabbed this, he grabbed this other guy, I know, by his neck. Grabbed him by his neck and was like, do you have love in your heart, young man? You want to be a roach? Well, you want to walk with God? I'm looking like, you going to let him grab you like that? But then, you know, he be on some tough guy shit, too. So I guess he a tough uh, cake touch. Did, did you see him do anything with anybody or anything? or? No, I seen him holding hands with two men. Damn. Like this. <laughs> I seen that. I seen that. So, you know, like, they'll, they'll have a dude come out with the paper, sign an NDA. No, I'm going to the car, bro. I'm good. I'm not signing no NDA. I'm going to the car. I'm good. Seeing that, bro. So, seeing all this coming in the news, people was telling me I was crazy. Said I was a hater. Hey, you know what? I don't want to party with the girls with the, with the third leg, but I'm good. I'll just be with the guys chilling. I don't got to be in here with y'all. But if you're getting 1500 for the night, you're going to try to find a gray area to operate in. You feel me? I've seen these things. What do you think about them accusing Diddy of having cameras in his house so he could record celebrities and politicians and use it as blackmail? So I firmly believe that's true because in that sector of people, a lot of them practice Scientology and Scientology that was they thing they would get people in compromising positions they would hold that footage over their head and get them to agree to things you see what I'm saying so like you know what if you okay if you see somebody with the chain on with that little vial of blood on their neck well they a Scientologist bro so it's definitely going to be footage of them somewhere doing some compromising. That's how a lot of these agreements get made. 
people get endorsed. How did they get that deal out of nowhere? Because, like, I think he wanted them Scientology people, bro. Because that's probably where he got that from. And being somebody who people call when things get crazy, like, some of the most powerful people I bodyguarded for like to get tied up. You feel me? They got videos of them getting tied up, somebody spanking them with a whip. A lot of powerful guys operate like that. So the things I'm seeing with him, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. You're not gonna you're not gonna settle a lawsuit with somebody for 30 million, bro, if it's not some truth there. You ever heard of Gene Deal? Yep. Interviewed him. Okay. Yeah. So like Gene, like like 14 years older than me, 15 years older than me. You know what I'm saying? But you know, he was a probation officer. So he operated a little bit different. I was in the street full time, bro. You feel me? Like, I was outside in the field. So, like, you know, you would hear Gene say when they got a threat on their life, Diddy told him, I'm not trying to hear that shit, Gene. Because it's your job to be gangster. It's your job to, to, to get wild with people. That's what you're getting paid for. So when you see people like that coming out, it's because they know for a fact, like, it's things that's going on they don't agree with, but they not man enough to say, you know what, I'm not standing for this. So a lot of love me because if I see some guys doing something crazy to a female, hold on, but not in front of me. So that'll lead me to get like, oh, we ain't going to hire him no more. Because he's not gonna allow this. So that's how like I ended up like whenever Imana called me, I'm immediately coming because like he not on this strange shit y'all on. You know what I'm saying? That's why like if uh I don't wanna say his name, I was telling the contract with him. Um hmm. let me be careful here. Let me be careful here, man. <laughs> let me be careful, cause uh hmm. That stuff about Diddy real, bro. What do you think about the Meek Mill accusations? <sighs> okay. Now, you know, I used to bodyguard Rocky Fresh, who was signed to Rose. Yep. All right. Now, Meek said he wouldn't do a song with Rocky because Rocky wasn't street. Right. So, little things that take place. And people will expect certain things out of him. But now with the, some of this stuff's coming out, if you look at his body of work, it's, it's been strange things in his history. So then, you know, you go on his Twitter page, you, you, you click on his likes, bro. You see things that he's liking. That's questionable. Would you come up in here with a matching shirt with me? Hell no. Hell no. Ace. Would you would you pop out with a matching shirt with me, bro? <laughs> Styles, put that on something. You will pop out with no, boy. It's not going like that, bro. Would you let me call you daddy? Hell no. No, bro. I've been saying this for years. I say, man, these boys strange, bro. The things they into is strange. I've seen so much. I've seen a lot, bro. So like with him. Look how he responded to the situation. Not one time did he come out and say these things are a lie. Did you see that? Yep. He didn't say that. He didn't deny it. That's... No, he didn't deny nothing. Because if he deny it, what's going to come out? Footage. Mm. You think, so you think Diddy has footage on Meek? For sure. He got cameras through his whole crib. Every millionaire, billionaire I've been around, bro, they got, so I know what's going on. So if I go into the bathroom, I'm going to cut the lights off, cut the flash on my phone, and look at the mirrors. If it's got that little hollow circle at the bottom, well, there's cameras in there. It's all, they're going to be all through the crib. That's why most times I'm going to chill in the car. Call me, text me if it's getting dangerous, I'm coming in demonstrating, point blank, period. This the facts, bro. I've been saying it for years, bro. It's for years. That's why I stopped just going by myself. Because I be having my own money. You know what I'm saying? So, like, 
you can't just tell me anything. So I'm like, okay, me and phone I'm pulling up here. That's all. I'm not going to pay for all your friends. The guys got cheese. We go to the club. We're going to buy our own bottles. We're going to stand right here and make sure don't nothing happen. But when it comes to that camera stuff, people not denying it because they know they was there. What do you think about Diddy's friends not defending him and, you know, 50 Cent kind of pointing that out about Jay-Z? 50 Ben knew it. Fifth Ben knew these things. 50 will pay a private investigator to follow you around and to go to your party. At that top level, that's how they plan, bro. That's how they come in that top level. People not finna come out and deny it because, all right, the search warrant come. They pull these, these files and they see you at that crib. What you about to say? What are you going to say? If you know you didn't do nothing, you're going to say, man, that's a lie. Nobody's saying that. So what does that mean? Yeah, I hear you. Because I'm going to make sure you know, no, I was not there. No, I was not touching man cakes. No, I'm not kissing men in here. Well, if that's what you do, that's what you do. But I'm not coming like that. Me and Fulton, I'm not coming like that. This the world we in now, though, so I just move accordingly. Uh, so being from Chicago. Yes, sir. Have you ever ran across R. Kelly or been around R. Kelly? I grew up around this guy. So R. Kelly, personal pastor, his reverend, that's my uncle. So my uncle Keith have took me around him multiple times trying to get him to hire me to be, hire him to be his security. Now the first time I ever seen him was at my church a couple times when I was a kid and I was seeing him at my uncle's house. You feel me? I was seeing him there. But I never liked the dude, bro. I always thought something was strange about him because I used to go to this school called Providence St. Mel. Now that sex tape that he had with the year old, she went to that same school. So this was already floating around in the city already. You know what I'm saying? So I had been knowing this guy. I never liked him. I thought he was strange. You feel me? So my uncle come get me. He say, nephew, I got a gig for you. Uh, Robert trying to hire a new security. Because he always had Hammer with him. And he always had that white guy, Chris, with the hearing problem. We had the hearing aid in. He always had them. So they fell out over money. So my uncle tried to smooth, smooth me right in. But the problem was, though, you know, we in the locker room, they about to, they changing clothes before they go hoop. He stripped completely naked, balls hanging, everybody else fully dressed. He stripped completely naked, say, everybody gather around, I got to tell y'all something. They gathering around, I'm like, what the, hold on, boy. Like, but I don't know if y'all know me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not coming like this. He stripped naked, bro. And he say, I'm getting married to music. I bought a mansion in Indianapolis. I'm getting married to a seven feet tall gold harp that he got made, bro. He got a gold harp made, seven feet tall. They had a whole ceremony. He got married to that harp. So he 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 telling everybody this. I'm looking like, damn, like, y'all cool with bro just being naked like this? Y'all all got on clothes. We just hit a hoop. You would be naked in front of all us in here before we go hoop, bro? Nah, bro. Hey, no, bro. No, bro, bro. No, you're not doing that. Okay. We get into the little gym area. He's shooting from half court, bricking. So this other dude like, man, bro, what the hell are you doing, bro? He said, don't worry about that. So I'm like, damn. So this celebrity stuff, like, they let anybody do anything. He's shooting from half court, missing. Talking about he, uh... He said God was going to make him hit the shot. It just got to the point where I told my uncle, like, man, bro, because he had a little chick there. She had acne all over her face with them big shades on. I'm like, man, this is not for me. Because I'm already in the, in the field. I'm getting money in the street already. Like, I'm doing my thing. We having businesses, stuff like that. So I just got up out of there, bro. But I seen this with my own two eyes. Bro. He stripped naked. Told us about the heart. 
seven feet tall harpy getting married to said he had albums stacked up like nuclear warheads like yeah you know this this these albums i got stocked up worth a billion dollars but he was running out of money because he was fighting multiple cases you see what i'm saying and he was there with that same female who said he was tied up they was he was tying her up she was there i seen her there so i'm like man which female said she was tying him up the one that she said he was holding them against their will okay she was there but it wasn't it was just her by herself though so i seen these things yeah, that's why my uncle and my mama was like, my mom was against me being around them at all because of this. Because this was already common knowledge. In the city, this was definitely common knowledge, bro. I grew up around this dude, bro. I, I seen him a lot of times. I seen him hella times, bro. I never liked him, though. That's correct. Nobody is going to come out and say that I'm lying, bro. They not. Because they know not to play with me off top. Because I'm not, I'm not going to be out here capping. These are the facts, bro. Aaliyah was 15, married to him. What were the rumors about that that were going on? It wasn't even no rumor. This was documented. Right, right. I mean, what were people saying? Or, you know, did you see anything or hear anything at the time? It was already a known fact that Robert liked the... So even even way back in the 90s. Yeah, I was a kid. When I, when I was a kid, Yeah. he had become to our church singing. The people in the church would be saying, why they got him coming here singing? He a pedophile. That's why I was getting into it. My, my uncle, my man, unc, like, I'm trying to deliver him from these evil spirits and all of that. But my uncle a hustler, bro. You feel me? He ain't do that church shit until after he went to prison and shit like that. You feel me? You know, street guys, bro, once they other shit, other stuff don't work, now they a preacher now. That's easy money. For sure, bro. I've been a gangster my whole life, bro. So it's just like, I'm not with this type of activity y'all on. But I've seen it for myself. Why do you think R. Kelly got away with this for so long? Money. In our community, bro, when that cheese get involved, we we we'll look past a lot of stuff. For sure, bro. This the Pied Piper they called him, right? Yep. The man got a song say, my mind's telling me no. Why your mind telling you no if this a grown female? Why was your mind tell my mind telling me no? Two grown people in here. I'm rich. She beautiful. We finna get wild. Your mind telling you no because she a stupid man. Damn. Seen it. Oh. I've been saying it for years, bro. They said I was crazy. I wasn't crazy. I got a little sister, bro. Who a model? She been in published magazines, books. So I gotta move a little bit different. Something happened to my little sister. That mean I'm. That mean nothing I say matter nothing. All that gangster shit you be on don't matter. Your little sister out here getting did crazy. No, bro. That's why I was always kind of. My family used to get mad at me because how I used to treat people. Cause I knew the truth, bro. Like, it's something about these guys in that industry with them. Bro, that's a fact. Like the dude from Nickelodeon, nobody saying anything about this. He doing an interview saying, "Yeah, I had the guy with Drake and Josh giving me massages." Who are you talking about? You ain't know about this? Nah. His name Dan Schneider, right? What's the dude name from Drake and Josh? Said he was getting molested by dude. They all doing interviews about it. Nobody saying nothing. Cause it's common knowledge. Everybody already know. Yeah. All right. He be tied up somewhere. They gotta pay a ransom for him. Somebody in our family. Oh my god. Damn. And have you ever met Jaleel White? Yeah, hell yeah. I was, I was his bodyguard. I said I sent you the photos, right? Yes. I believe, I got some photos. I don't remember them though. Hold on, I got some photos right now I'm gonna show you. Oh, okay. Of well, a of okay. a somebody else oh, though. Is, oh, producer and songwriter. Yeah, my boy yeah. Jaleel, Steve Urkel. Dope, dope. I feel bad for him sometimes because when he be out, people only know him for being Urkel. So he'll be like, I ain't been him for 25 years, 20 years. So like, he always gonna be known for being on some goofy activity, even though he a grown man now, you know what I'm saying? So I've been with him on dates and everything. Solid dude, good guy, bro. Like, 
Good guy. He a good guy. Like I don't got no crazy stories about. Him. He like grown women. He like he like white women with the with big booties, bro. That's his thing, bro. Like I ain't never seen him do nothing weird. He be smooth. He cool. Shout out Jaleel, man. And now Rick Ross. Have you ever worked or bodyguarded with Rick Ross? So, okay. Now, my really first encounter with him was when I was head of security at this at, at the Vibe nightclub. You feel me? They had booked him for a show. Now, this is when BMF, the song Blowing Money Fast, was big. Burning the city down. So the the night that they coming, this this um this guy show up like in like like a sheriff's outfit. And he like, yeah, man, I'm here to serve Ross for some papers. You feel me? Some guys tried to snatch his chain from him and his entourage almost beat him to death. So the owner of the club So wait, who's who's they tried to take Ross's chain? So at another show, I think like someplace else in Illinois, they tried to take his chain. They didn't take the chain and they almost got beat to death. So they ended up suing. So he had to come and serve him the papers for this. You feel me? So when Ross get there, dude walk up to him, hand him the papers, shake his hand. Ross took the papers and just kept it moving. Now during this time, you feel me? It's controversy in the city because of the whole him having the six point star on his album artwork. And then him saying he think he big meets Larry Hoover. So a lot of the GDs is upset about this. So they came to confront him about this. So that photo with him and Larry Hoover Jr., I took that picture. That photo was taken on my phone. I took that photo. When you see Ross, Larry Hoover Jr. right there, I don't want to took that picture. Because at this club, because he had a... um. His bodyguard personally was James Fears. James Fears, when he got there, me and him chopping it up about how we gonna set everything up. We said, look, I want you to be with him the whole time while me and my staff secure the little area that we in. Cause bro, I'm big, you know what I'm saying? And my reputation is known for being thorough in, this, in that field. So like, you know, ain't nobody trying to die and go to jail. Most guys, no, I'm not scared of hell or jail. So, you know, Whatever, I'm gonna handle the business, I'm gonna get my cheese, I'm going back to the crib. So when he got there, bro, it was a lot of GDs in the building, bro. Like they came for this. But he wasn't scared, he wasn't soft, like he he addressed them properly. You know what I'm saying? So I took that photo between them. So when that photo started spreading around, that was that was big for the city because they felt like Ross came through and he paid homage. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I, I was already tied in with that. So then when Rocky got his deal with him, you know, I would be with Rocky. So like when they was having the whole problems with the GDs and shit, you know, me and my guys insane. So it's different for us. Like, you know, they, they normal GDs, we insane. So it was like, okay, we not gonna let y'all get out on Rocky at any time. So, you know, Rocky would have us with him and we would just keep things smooth. But it was that, that was controversial, bro, because like it was a lot of problems with that. A lot of problems. How with did that. Ross get him off him? Now look, now this when things get foggy because before like certain little things started coming out, I was told that he possibly had paid some little cheese. I believe there was also some some court, somebody testified about this too. I, I remember seeing some paperwork about this. Now, now, when it come to that, free the hate committee, free the hates. You feel me? Uh, you know they GDs from the south. So, dude that said that was part of the hate committee. So they was the enforcers for. It's public record, so I can say this. So they was the enforcers for the folks down there. So, so when KK got locked up, he was campaigning hard about people having to pay up money for using Larry name and using the six point star. So the only way I could see them getting off of him 
it's, it's some cheese had to get paid. Bro. That's that's the only the only thing I can see. So were guy were they going to Rick Ross's shows and concerts? They was going to Rocky to shows. Him? They was going to all of his artist shows. They was going. To, it's been shout out Dan Folger. You know Dan Folger on Shop Gold, Shop GLD. He was Wiz Khalifa cameraman. He got on doing Shop Gold. He he on private jets traveling the world right now. Dan Folger was with me, Rocky, the whole little entourage in the club in Chicago. When these guys came and surround the table, talking about, yeah, um, ain't no MMG artist coming in here. So it's like, what? So I'm that me, Duga. Next interview, Duga gonna be here, bro. You gotta meet him, bro. Cause like, this stuff got real serious, bro. Like it was, this got real serious. So they surround the table. So I, I knock everything off the table and Dan grabbed Dan Folger, a white guy, my homie from uh, from Pittsburgh, he grabbed a Grey Goose bottle and he started standing on the table. I'm like, all right, bet. He on point. I said, look, bro, I'm going to do what I got to do right here. Use this bottle, bro. You feel me? Because if I got to use the demonstration, we're going to be on the news. Use this bottle. So it was a guy. He had a cross tattoo on his face. He's steady, throwing up rakes and all of this shit like that. So I step off the table and I talk to him. I said, what's going on? He said, yeah, man, you know, folks said they can't be in here until they pay that money. I'm like, bro, we're not paying no money, bro. You feel me? So we we was able to demonstrate with each other. And I wasn't paid the, the club security $400. I gave them all 100 a piece, and they drug his ass up out of there, point blank, period. Because it's like, man, with the gangsters, bro, like, you're going to have to kill their ass, bro. They going to they gonna demonstrate regardless. They don't mind crashing out. Damn. That was real, bro. That was a real situation. That, that was that was real smoke right there. And everybody that was on the label, they felt that, bro. They felt that because Rocky have a have a booking and call us, yeah, we gonna catch his ass lack in the day we want that MMG chain. So me and phone number have to pull up. One day I went to jail. I go to jail to, at the last show, call us, say shit about to go down. So we push up. And we put Rocky in our car. Rocky getting there, you feel me? There's a bunch of the guys in there. We got so many guns in the car. Rocky like, damn, he wasn't even trying to be in the car. But police pull up, so I hop out the car. They end up taking me to jail, so all that type of stuff. I was able to get off all that little jam because the guys had bailed out the car. Rocky bailed out with them, you feel me? So Rocky went this way, they went that way. So I just stayed there with the whip. And then, because I ain't had no license or nothing like that. I wasn't supposed to be driving, but I only popped out because they was, I knew they were trying to catch my mans. And Rocky, my real brother, though. Like, you feel me? Like, I would come out with him even if he's not paying me. So, like, that was a real situation. That was, that was real. And a lot of the older GDs that I know say that Ross paid. So, I don't know. I can't verify, but that's what I heard. And why would they lie? But if a dude to go in court and testify that Ross paid three million, you think he gonna lie under oath? You think he lie under oath? You lie under oath? Knowing they come with perjury? I would probably lie. I probably would just be like, I don't know anything. Fact, but you know he trying to. Right. Well, that, I mean, his situation is different. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I right. wouldn't say anything. But you know, if he's if he's already agreed to cooperate, of course he's not gonna lie. Hell no, nah, bro. Cause then now your deal gonna get avoided. Now you finna get max time. Ain't nobody trying to get max time. What about Jeezy? I've been around Jeezy a couple times. He's very scary. Yeah, he a real scary guy. Like, I like his music and stuff like that. But like, I don't look at him as nobody that's a gangster or nothing like that. That's a rapper. Like, I don't really think he was doing the things he was saying like that. It's a rapper guy. What about Gucci Man? Man, he a real gangster for sure though. Cause uh, one time I had got a call because he had barricaded himself in a hotel room. He barricaded himself in the hotel room, the promoter trying to get their back end back. At this time, I guess the Molly was beating him. <laughs> he was getting wild with everybody. So I guess he said he wasn't paying nobody nothing. So like a couple guys that called me like, man, you would take some money to help us get Gucci out this hotel room. I'm like, bro, he gon' 
he going to pop us, bro. You feel me? Like, I'm not going to get shot with y'all, bro. Like, we going to kick down his door? He going to blow us down. Like, y'all crazy? Like, bro, I'm not on no crash out missions, bro. You feel me? Like, and then at the same time, he in Chicago, bro. He know how to move in Chicago, bro. Because he already had other Chicago guys with him. There was some guys from out west, I think. He already had Chicago guys with him. And in Chicago, bro, you got to be smooth. Because, like, you know, you might be cool with them. That back door will get left open thinking you cool with somebody, bro. So, like, yeah. Everything you hear about well, Gucci down Did he get in a too. fight at a mall with somebody or something? He got in a fight at a couple malls. He definitely beat up somebody in Chicago at a mall. For sure. A fan, too, who was trying to play with him. He knocked him out at the mall. I think it was Forest City. He knocked out a fan at Forest City Mall, for sure. That's a fact. I know about that firsthand. And so... Gucci man was in there just just wilding out, not. So look, bro, anybody who know, bro, if you popping pills, staying up all night drinking liquor, bro, that second or third day you finna go crazy, bro. You feel me? Second or third day, anything goes now. Like you finna start wilding out on everybody. Like he buried he. I know he barricaded himself in the hotel room, bro, for sure, bro, and was trying to get him to pay that money. He did not pay that money, bro. He ended up getting up out of there and getting locked up because he had drove to Chicago in a, in a Hummer from Atlanta. He drove in a Hummer on like 28s. You know how crazy that is? You driving from the A to Chicago on a Hummer on 28 so you can have your pipe with you. You're not finna fly. You got to have your pipe. So I'm like, man, yeah, we got his Hummer surrounded. He not coming out. He just going to blow y'all ass down. Yeah, I avoided that jam. I Man. avoided that one for sure. Was that your only interaction with Gucci? I had seen him other times before that because one of my guys was his bodyguard when he came in Chicago. My homie, uh, I ain't going to say his name because uh, he got like, a little federal case going on right now. But anybody know, big bro with the blonde hair, he got the, the shamrock on his neck. Anybody in the field know who I'm talking about. You feel me? So... You know, ain't no mystery in Gucci history, bro. You know, he like Michael Jackson in the city, for sure. OT Genesis. OT, one of them real boys, bro. Bro, okay. Now, OT Genesis, bro, I vouch for him, bro. Like, he really one of them guys, bro. Like, he a rapper, but he a man first, bro. He a gangster also, you feel me? Like, he not spooky, he not scary. So, that video I had sent you with me, him was on stage. Yep. My homie had just got shot probably about 20 feet away from us. So my homie gets shot in the stomach because he ran to his off. They want their leg back. You feel me? So my homie gets shot. He put the mic down. You see me. Got the camera up. I'm kicking it. You know what I'm saying? So when this, when that happened, niggas rushed the stage. So they rushed the stage. He get knocked down. So I grab him, pick him up on his feet. We all start running out. We start running out. We get to the stairwell going down the stairs of the strip club. Most shooting take place. You feel me? Now, at this time, he had some other people with him. You know what I'm saying? But, like, we would always communicate because the, that day when Wiz Khalifa ran about the club, that club, I had met him performing there because my homie uh, Barris owned that club, uh, Room 7. You feel me? Embarrassing them billionaires. You feel me? They sold their construction company. They billionaires. So they have pay anything to get somebody to come through their club. So like if they have stars come, they'll be like, Keith, we need you to come up here right now. And then I pull up and then OT was cool, bro. He 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 started talking to me. We had exchanged numbers and we had locked in from there. Like, so when I sent that video of him and AD fighting and he had dude in the headlock, oh yeah, that's him, bro. He gonna rumble, bro. He not no joke. Shout out OT Genesis. OT ain't no joke. He the real deal for sure. For sure. Shout out to the local OT. You mentioned Wiz. Did you ever bodyguard with Wiz or have any encounters with him? Straight. He's a hoe. Scariest dude I've ever seen in my life. Get this, bro. Me and phone them at the Dana Hotel, bro. 660 North State Street at the bar ghouling out. Barris called me. He said, Keith. We booked Wiz for the night. Where are you at? I'm down the street, bro. Calm down. We finna slide. Get over here now. Bet. We push up. 
The man, we are so scary, bro. We get into the club, walk into the section. Now, mind you, I just told you that I had knew Dan Folger, his cameraman. I'm like, man, is, is Dan here? We are smoking his weed. He give a little, no, he not here. So Chevy Woods, shout out Big Duga. Big Duga push up on Chevy Woods like, man, I'm hit your weed. Well, Chevy Woods, cool. We, they smoking, I don't really smoke like that. So they smoking, I'm standing next to Wiz, you feel me? The owner tell me, make sure he's straight. The man gets up, walks out the club and leave before he perform. He had to give his back end back. He was so scared. So the owner, he's embarrassed like, Keith, you made Wiz leave. I'm like, I didn't make him leave. Y'all called me to come up here to make sure he was straight. He was so scary, bro. He got up and left, bro. Now, mind you, he got to the club about 10, 15. He was supposed to perform at 11. By 10.30, he was gone, bro. He left, bro, and had them paid the money back. He was that scary. I'm like, he didn't, he, I'm like, I'm the security for you. He was so scary, but I seen him doing a little wrestling shit now. He wrestling, doing jujitsu. I'm glad he doing that. He must have got him some heart now because he ain't have it that day. <laughs> oh, bro, his ass was, he's super scary. He was scary, super scary. I couldn't believe that. Wiz is. You know how much you had to pay back? I think they pay him like 30000 So he probably had to give him like 15 back, something like that. He paid that money back too, though. Super scary. <laughs> seen it. What about DMX? Have you ever ran across him? I've seen DMX in Chicago hella times, bro. He was crazy. He'll be randomly out west racing cars. He liked the remote control cars. On them motorcycles, him and like 30 other the Rough Riders. Like DMX was all through the city all the time. He was, yeah, DMX was crazy, bro. Like he, I never had to work with him or nothing like that, but he was all through the city, bro, all the time. Anybody was in Chicago around that time where DMX was outside, shout out uh, Allie. Allie, one of the Rough Riders, she had vouched for that. She had definitely vouched for that. DMX was active, for sure. Okay, now, for people who probably don't know, you're from Chicago. For sure. Where, whereabouts in Chicago did you grow up? Shit, man, I grew up all around the city. Mostly 103rd and Wentworth. I spent time on 61st and Eberhardt. I spent time on on the low end, for sure. The Wild Hunters. Shit, I even... I was getting into so much shit as a kid, though. My mom had moved us out to the Burbs, like in Country Club Hills out there for a little while. But then I ended up going back to the city though, cause like trying to get money. I ain't trying to be with the suburban guys too long. You feel me? But I grew up all around the city, bro. But I spent a lot of my time on 103rd and on 61st. You ended up in STL's hood. Oh hell yeah, cause the guys had a crib on 61st and Everhart. You feel me? So and then that's when all of this shit started taking place, cause you so, cause around, you, so around what year was this that you were living? Uh, in their hood? I want to say like 2012, 13, 14, 15. Oh, uh, right in the middle of the war. Hell yeah, bro. Because like TB and Poppy and all of them. Like, bro, I used to have a little barbershop. My people had a barbershop on 456 East 61st Street, bro. So, you know, I would always see TB. I would always see Poppy. I would always see, I always, I had seen Duck a lot. I've been in the same studio as Duck because my homie Les. Duck his little brother. That's Ruger's dad, Les. No, no, no. Les. Les got a son called Les. Oh, okay. You feel me? Les got another son called Les. They got the same name. You feel me? Les Weekly. You feel me? So my homie Les, who I I was in, I was playing college football. Les was on the basketball team at Joliet Junior College. You feel me? So that was my boy. We had locked in. You feel me? So throughout that time, I always knew Duck was his little brother. You feel me? So, so right, right down the street from where Chino got killed at, Dirk manager, we had a studio on 80, 84th and East End, walking distance from Stony Sub, where Chino got killed at. You feel me? So, it's been a couple of times where Duck was in that same studio with us. You see what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, I, I knew a lot of them, bro. Like, you know, right after Poppy had got shot the first time, Lonely at Poppy. 
he comes to the studio limping. You feel me? And he getting into it with the barber and shit. Because the barber had a f***ed up eye. He was starting going blind in his eye. He f***ed up Poppy lining. Poppy was like, man, you ain't going to be able to cut up here. Nothing no more if you don't fix my lining. So I ended up lining them up and shit, fixing it up, cleaning that whole situation up. So I used to see them all the time, bro. Like, like when that little story about Lil B putting the wig on, popping dude. I'm right. I was on the street that day. Because what had happened that is in walking this like half a block to where we was at. So you would hear little rumors and shit like come in and say, man, he supposed to be they little they top shooter. They talking about TB at the time. So like, yeah, I'm familiar with all of that, bro. All of them for sure. What were the rumors about Little B? Did you ever meet him? I definitely met him. Like, okay. Bro, he was a savage, bro. He was a little bit more advanced. And a lot of them other guys over there, he was, he was on that, bro. Like the pol, like the police would come to the barber shop and say, like, yeah, if this guy comes over here, we don't want him on this street. You call us immediately, type type of activity. He got killed by the police, cause he wasn't afraid of nothing. He gonna get crazy with you for sure. He had put a disguise on, bro. A little short dude. He had put a disguise on, bro. He had dressed like a homeless person and lay on the street to catch you walking past. That's how committed he was to that, bro. That's a fact. That's Damn. a fact. What about Duck? Did you ever hang out with Duck or? Yeah, hell yeah. All right, hold on, let me be careful here. <laughs> let me be careful here right here, because I ain't really trying to. Shout out Duck, bro. Shout out his whole family, bro. You feel me, y'all? Duck was always cool, bro. He was a gangster. He was about his business. He was always cool, bro. He he was a leader for his neighborhood, for his homies, bro. Like, a lot of people was hurt when Duck died because Duck was well-loved, bro. He was well-loved, bro. Like, shout out Big Clout. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people love Duck. Um... Yeah, so I don't want to talk about something. Yeah, I'm going to leave that right there alone right there. We have, oh, next time, I, I'm going to talk to some people. And once I get clearance, then I'll speak on some things that I, that I definitely seen. But shout out Duck, bro. Duck was, Duck was solid for sure. But at the same time, that's my homie little brother. That's my homie. That was, that was a little less brother, bro. You feel me? So like. Now, living right there on, you know, in their hood, man, you know, did you ever have any situations where your life was in danger or anything? Hell yeah, because, like, they knew that they frequented that barbershop. So it would be times where, like, you would come out and we would have to walk the ladies out at night, you feel me, having that money, and then, like, you would have to be real smooth over there, bro, because... It was a couple times, bro, like, I don't believe in tucking my jewelry or nothing like that. So it was been a couple times I was over there and like, man, he brave for wearing that shit. And they'll be over there like, no, no, big bro good type shit like that. You feel me? So like, a lot of things that's like headlines throughout the culture. Yeah, I was I was right there in that area when it was happening. Like, we got, we got blue at by the in the O a couple times. Just being right there. We got blue at the, by them a couple times for sure, bro. For sure. For sure, for sure. Did you ever know any any of the guys from O Block or anything? Did so, you, any you know, I had met Dirk being, being bodyguarding for Rocky. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like a lot of them was younger than me, so I wasn't ever like in they mix like that. I had met Dirk before. He was always cool. Um we ain't really, I ain't never really mingled with the guys in the O like that, though. Just due to the, you know how that shit go, bro. That shit close to each other right there. And, like, my homie right here was locked up with Vaughn. Lord. I know. He was locked up with Vaughn, bro. Vaughn, him and Vaughn was, was smooth, bro. They was, it's been time. We be in traffic. We was uh, at that pizza spot right there. At that pizza spot right there across from the O. Him and Vaughn interact with each other, chopping it up type shit. Like, they was cool, you know what I'm saying? So it was always crazy for me because I knew people on both sides. So I had to 
operate a little bit different. What? Well, I know that. He was locked up with Vaughn, bro. Like they was, Vaughn knew him. They knew each other. Oh, oh, damn. Hell yeah, they knew each other, bro. That's common knowledge amongst the guys. But the thing is, though, like it was rumors that he was the one who had blew at us that day. So it was weird. Cause turn up God, free turn up God. <laughs> you feel me? So turn up God was in the car sleep. He see blowing, he pop out, come here. Boom, you feel me? So shorty branch off, gray hoodie, shake off. He run. So like at that time, it was hot, bro. Like it was hot, but it was going down, bro. So they were pretty sure it was it was Vaughn. That's what they would. Were... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shorty was bro, Shorty was with that shit, bro. He was with that shit. He was on that. Free turn up, God. On bro, free free turn up, bro. Free folks. Net, when he come home, shout out Cam Capone for letting me come up here, bro. You feel me? We gon' There's a lot of things people didn't hear about, but but y'all gonna hear about it though. Is anything else about Chicago we can touch on? Chicago is a wild place, man. Be careful in the city, man. Like. I don't even know why y'all want to visit. Everybody want to pull up in Chicago, go to murals, and be smooth, man. Like, that ain't no place to be playing around at. Because it's a big difference between there and on the West Coast. Like, the West Coast got more strict politics. Like, in, in Chicago, bro, like, everybody know who they ops are, but they're not going to do no talking with you. They see you as that for you, anywhere you at. Point blank period, man. It's a beautiful city. Stay downtown, bro. Like, don't be trying to go around being a tourist. They might never see your ass again, man. Be on point. Be smooth. Shout out to the whole city, though. That's what I be trying to tell people, bro. Like, is the, the guys who really in the mix, like, the guys who really in the mix, bro, like, the guys who really active, like, we don't really get to say much. You know what I'm saying? Without these type of platforms, like people won't be able to hear the intricate details on how people are able to move the way they moving. You know what I'm saying? Cause like the guys I be with, real deal, bro. Real deal for sure. Like, like, yeah. It's documented, so nobody can come out and say that we lying. Can't do that. It'll never happen. Yeah, I hear well, you. Won't happen. So uh, bodyguarding all these people, right? You know what I'm saying, D going around meeting all these different people. You know what I'm saying, ended up in some Diddy parties. You know, is there any other celebrities or any you know famous people that you might have seen wearing dresses or you know doing anything that you can talk about? Like the only only guy I seen in a dress personally is the White Howard. You know what I'm saying? I seen him in a dress. I seen it for myself. If you if you go around any celebrities, bro, in the club, any place like that, and there's no women in their section, if they keeping the females boxed out and it's all guys hugging on each other, you know what time it is, bro. It's not a secret. That's why I be looking like, man, who y'all think y'all fooling, bro? Like, we know what's going on, bro. Like, so when I all this coming out, I've been saying it for years, Cam. For years, bro, I've been saying it, bro. Like, man, that's why I stopped taking a lot of gigs, bro. Like, man, I can't do it, but you're not gonna have me caught up. And then if I see somebody doing something crazy to some underage females, period, well, I'm finna do something. I'm not finna just stand there and allow this. Like, y'all can't do nothing. Y'all can't whoop me. What y'all gonna do to me in here, bro? I'm the muscle in here. I'm the one who got paid to come in here and be gangster. Like, y'all not finna bully me or play with me no type of way. So it's like, that's why when I see, when I be seeing Gene Deal, look at his history. He a cop. He a parole, probation officer. He's a cop at the end of the day. So what he gonna do? He gonna stand there, take notes, and try to indict you later. That's how he operate. That's how all cops operate, bro. Cause there's no way, bro, I'm finna be standing right there. Y'all got some underage females in here. Y'all doing, we not doing that. I stand on business of doing it for years, bro. That's why I'm loved and respected everywhere I go across the world. Like I'm never going for that. So that's why, you know, I'm thankful for you. Because what? People will never hear this part. They won't hear this part. Have you ever been around Cat Williams? 
I've been at some comedy shows and seeing Cat Williams, and each time he talking crazy to everybody, bro. He gangster, bro. You feel me? Like him, people don't know this. Him and Trey Songs, bro, is gangster, bro. They some savages, bro. They don't care. You're not going to punk them. You feel me? Like they going to get crazy with you and they going to tell you how they feel about you in your face. You see Trey Songs, I, I seen him fighting the police before in Chicago. R&B singer. He a savage, bro. Shout out Trey Song. Take sure. me through the night you were seen, you seen Cat. Take, take me through some of the incidents. Uh, I think it was House of Blues. They had a show up there. I was bodyguarding somebody up there who was going to go see the show. And, uh, you know, Cat Williams would stand there and demonstrate after the show. Like, he would come out and kick it. He would be in the parking lot drinking, talking shit. You feel me? Like, he is really a man of the people. He cool. But the things that he's saying now is the same things I was always saying. Like, man, this stuff is weird, man. Strange, bro. Strange activity in Hollywood, bro. I've seen it for myself. So, like, Cat Williams, I feel like he was always vocal about how he felt. Like, he always would call people out, stuff like that. I never, I just feel like he never felt, felt like he was bigger than the people. You know what I'm saying? Like, what'd you think about his interview that went viral? I feel the same way he feel most times, bro. Like, it's evil, bro. It'd be some evil things taking place, bro. And people overlook it because these people got all this money and influence. So I respected what he did because you got to be a G in your heart to come out there and say those things. You feel me? Because, you know, I think when I had seen him, I think, um, Suge Knight was his manager, I believe, at that time. I believe at that time, Suge Knight was his manager when I had encountered him. You feel me? And he was wilding out at that time. You feel me? He was, he more toned down now than he was then, but. Is there anything you've seen him doing you could talk about? I just seen him doing normal, normal entertainer stuff, bro. Like, you know, chilling with females. Drinking, kicking it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't seen him do nothing weird or questionable or nothing, nothing like that. I was, I was thinking, like, because he does have a reputation for going off on dudes and getting in fights and... Yeah, so, you know so saying? okay, so when I had seen him, pretty much, he was going off on some, on some people and Suge made them get in the car, you feel me? And they, they, they damn near ran people over in the Escalade getting out the jam and cat out the window still talking crazy. Yeah, he, he ain't no fear in his heart, bro. He gonna stand up to you if you six feet, nine or five feet, bro. He stand on his business. I respect it. What'd you think when you seen that? What do you think when you see someone like Cat going crazy on people? I felt like, I say, man, imagine the stuff this dude have seen. And then when you start speaking out, they instantly say, oh, he's doing drugs. But my most, most black dudes, entertainer guys, they just smoke weed and drink liquor. You know what I'm saying? So like, and then at the same time, like, cocaine not finna make you crash out. You wanna have a good time. You're not finna crash out off of that. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like guys get fed up, bro. They get fed up, you feel me? You, you, you have a certain moral compass and you see guys, you know what I'm saying, putting fingers in their homies, uh, but, you know what I'm saying? It's going to make you feel a type of way. Like, hold on. Am I the only guy up in here who like and respect females? What's up with y'all? Then they'll say, you the one that's crazy. They'll isolate you, boy, and say, you the one that's crazy. But how am I crazy? Y'all the ones getting sued. You ever seen Cat Williams get sued or somebody saying he was being a, 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 a sexual offender? No. Everybody who say he crazy is, though, they under this scrutiny. Suge Knight, was that your only time seen or only time Knight? ever seen, seen only time ever seeing Suge was that day. Only time ever seeing him. Only time ever seeing. You know, I'm a Chicago boy. You feel me? So I really only go to the West Coast to work. So I'm saying. So you hear a lot of things about Suge, but I never got to experience anything like that with him though. Like it was, it was a brief encounter with him. And he had went to jail shortly after that, too. So so I, I believe I heard you have a really good relationship with Amon Shepard. Yes, sir. That's my brother, my real homie right there, for sure. For sure. Shout out Shum. Shout out my boy Iman. Absolutely. How, so how'd you get in? You bodyguard him or you guys yeah, are just hell friends? Yeah, hell yeah. So basically, um, he had a, a personal assistant. And his personal assistant had brought me in. And man, me and Shump ended up locking in at that time. And, you know... 
whenever things that look tricky, he'll call me, bro. Like when his wife was pregnant, about to pop with uh with his firstborn, he called me. He said, man, I need to be with my wife. You feel me? She pregnant, you know, I don't want nothing going wrong with the pregnancy. So she had everybody get the uh the plaster stomachs. So her whole team had a plaster stomach like they was pregnant. Even the little guys that was with them, you feel me? So everybody had them stomachs on, you feel me? She had a couple club appearances and shit like that, you feel me? We ended up getting racially profiled at the Trump Hotel by the Mexican staff workers there. So they tell TT, like, do you, have, do you even have a room here? Now these Mexican people profiling her at the Trump. Which, which is crazy because you know how the little racial tension go with the politics and stuff like that. So they end up asking her, like, yeah, do you even have a room here? She like, what? Do I have a room? You know who I am? I'm trying to be humble, but hold on. So she showed them my Instagram. She was like a couple million followers. So they had to they had to pipe it down, you feel me? So she ended up giving birth like shortly after this. You know what I'm saying? She ended up giving birth like shortly after this. So like, uh, you know, I've been around Shump a lot, you feel me? In Cleveland when they won the championship, like that video I sent you, when we walking down the street, everybody swarming after they won a championship. You know, he'll give me court size seats, all type of stuff like that. I just never took them because, you know, you my homie, bro. I'm here to make sure you straight. I'm not trying to watch guys run down the court with a ball, bro. You feel me? Like, y'all can whatever y'all do, y'all do that. I'm here to make sure my homie good and, and we just and we mob after that. But I, it's been several parties I was with, though, when I seen LeBron. You know what I'm saying? So it was actually a party in Chicago when Bron was there. We was at Bevy. Bron was there. And the security was like, man, bro, don't be having people running up out of here today, man. We got LeBron in here. All this type of stuff. I got, I got a reputation. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Tristan Thompson is standing, like, on this side. So he wanted to talk to my homie Troy. So I move all the coats out the way. I'm like, man, Tristan, step over here. Tristan, the savage though, he not, you know, he will beat your ass. You feel me? So Tristan step over, and LeBron turn, look at me, and smirk, and shake his head, put his jacket on, and leave. So it's another time I get blamed for a celebrity leaving the club. I'm like, man, bro, it's not my fault, bro. Hit these people call me to come down here, bro. I don't know, something LeBron seen about me and the guys, he ain't want to be there no more, you feel me? And I, I got blamed for that. I got blamed for making LeBron leave. Bull, bullshit, bro. Straight goofy shit all the time. Shout out Bron, though. Is that the only time you ever seen or came across LeBron? No, 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 no. I seen LeBron multiple times when I lived in Cleveland. You know what I mean? I only seen him one time in Chicago. That was at the, at the club that night when him, Tristan was there. Troy was there, Tayana was there, Shump was there, you feel me? And I got blamed for him leaving that day. I'm like, damn, bro, like, but I mean, if I walk in the club with the guys, bro, the security in the club is all going to come and surround us like, like we finna do something because of the reputation, you know what I'm saying? It's just like. How big are you? I'm 6'6", six, six, 400 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I can yeah, see that. Yeah, yeah. Play football, all that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, there was a big rumor. Well, I don't even want to say a big rumor. This is like a rumor that not too many people really heard or know about. What's that? But it was that in the 2018 finals, when J.R. Smith messed up the first game and he forgot the score, the LeBron went in the locker room that night and broke his hand. He hit uh, he hit um, something and messed up his hand. Do you know anything about that? So look, all I'm going to say about this right here is this. Whenever you hear about a basketball player with a broken hand, they got mad and they punched a wall, a locker or something. This is That's always... This common knowledge of you in this field. You automatically know, oh, what? Broken hand, Friday night, something like that. They either didn't got into it with their girl or they didn't got into it with a teammate and they didn't punch the wall or something and broke their hand, bro. Like, that's, that's common knowledge, bro. Like when you hear about when Boozer broke his hand, like in the playoffs or something like that, he was arguing with his girl, bro. Broke his hand, punching the wall, bro. It's always something like that. Because how else would they break their hand? 
Well, I don't think it ever came out that he broke his hand. But that's what happened, though. I'm but, telling you, that's what happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what happened. Braun got pissed off, stole off the wall, man. Hand got broke. And he still played with it, though. Still played with it. Nobody even knows. No, no. that's why people got to give Braun his props. Because the average guy, what? I'm sitting out. I'm still getting millions. Whatever. I'm good. I'm gone. I'm gone. He loved the game, bro. He want to win. His legacy more important than all of that. So, God salute that. But he definitely punched the wall, though. I can verify that. Okay. I can verify it. Now, Kobe. Did you ever meet Kobe or hang around Kobe? Shout out, Kobe. Long live Kobe. I only seen Kobe a couple times. Uh, last mo most memorable time, Kobe drink Coronas all night with you, man. He'll sit there, talk shit, mostly about himself and how everybody else is trash. You feel me? And he gonna sit there and sip Coronas with you all night. I think we seen him at Dre's in Vegas. Yeah, we was in, we was at the club in Vegas. He was there for a little while. Like he didn't drink no hard alcohol though. Like his his buckets was full of just Coronas with limes. And Kobe was in there chilling, and everybody was like fanned out, bro. Like. That's how you, like, you would be around people who got a lot of fans. But when people have seen Kobe, bro, it's like they see. Because, you know, Michael Jordan, not personable like that. Kobe would talk with you. He would chop it up with you. He would kick it with you for a few minutes. Kobe is a good dude, man. Only a Kobe, man. That's kind of crazy because you really only hear about, like, Kobe's insane work ethic. And, you know, people don't really hear about, like, this party side of Kobe. You don't. You don't get too much of that. Because it's brief. It's brief. Like, he'll really be there 45 minutes. And then he's gone, bro. Like, he'll come in there. He'll kick it with you for a few minutes, bro. Then he's gone. Like, like if he visits your crib, his security is going to come in here. They're going to they gonna, they gonna tell you to come out the door. If he came and do an interview here, he gonna, then his security going to tell you to step outside your house. Tell your people to step outside. They're going to search the whole crib, bro. And then, all right, it's clear. Now you can come back in your own crib. And then he'll do the interview. Damn. Imagine that. Imagine that. That's facts, bro. I tell no lies, gang. That's facts. So when I heard about him dying, I was like, damn. Like, he took extra precautions for his safety. So him to go out like that, crazy. That's nuts, man. Crazy, Damn. bro. So recently, Loose Cannon. Yes, sir. He's been going viral. He's had some things to say about Big U. For sure. He had the uh, crazy story about Meek Mill. For you sure. know, that they had to pay to get Meek out of the club safely. You know, uh, what was your thoughts on that? My thoughts on it is this. Like, We never looked at Meek Mill and the Dream Chasers and them as like no gangsters or no like type of tough guys or nothing like that. Cause like, you know, the only thing you know about them is beating up Quentin Miller. You know what that is? Yep. That's the only like type of activity you hear about with them. So now in the field that I'm in, you know, any city you go in, bro, you got certain people you tap in with. Not checking in, you feel me? People you know, like, okay, look, bro, we out here. And they, if they love you, they're going to tell you, all right, man, you know, be smooth with him. He out here lurking right now. These group of guys is lurking, you feel me? When you get to the when you get to the airport, you feel me? Make sure you go right to your hotel. Don't be trying to go to the restaurant and flex. Because when you get to L.A., bro, it's, it's groups of guys waiting at key spots to see if they're going to catch somebody. And that dude, Louis Cannon, his name came across my desk before for sure as somebody that you gotta be aware of. So like, when I see people coming out saying he's a liar, like I don't know about them details that he's saying, but when it come to being in the street, I'm I'm gonna verify like he's somebody that you gotta be aware of for sure. Cause um, we was just at Molly Mall house. Yeah, we was at Molly Mall house, you feel me? And uh, shout out my boy, my, my boy, my boy 3 AM was at Molly Mall house. And shout out Molly Maul, but you heard what, what, what they did to Molly Maul? No. Yeah, boy, Lewis Cannon and them beat the brakes off Molly Maul, bro, for, for, for selling them a beat. Because, you know, Molly Maul don't really make beats. See what I'm saying? Like, Molly Maul don't really make beats. He'll have a team of producers. They'll have the beats. 
He'll put them up in the crib. They can stay at his crib and everything like that. He got the mansion and stuff like that. And he'll put his name on their beats to sell the beat and, 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 and cut them in on the sale. So he did something with Lewis Cannon, bro, and he was pissed off about it, bro, because I guess he double sold the beat because he didn't really own the beat. You feel me? Yeah, they beat the brakes off of him. Did him bogus. Hurt that man, bro. So that dude is somebody that I was always told when you in L.A., he's somebody, he be lurking. It's other guys who we aware of who be lurking through the city. You feel me? So they'll tell you, like, man, when you get to the airport, be smooth. You feel me? Don't be flexing. Don't be, don't be up in no roll, stuff like that. Go straight to your hotel. You feel me? Like, there's certain areas in LA where they tell, they tell me like, look, bro, if your clients out here, be on point, cause they got guys waiting at the key spots, bro, like to catch somebody, so they can. You get a Rolex, bro, a real Rolex, you can feed your team for a nice little minute after that. So you know you got to be smooth in LA, bro. They about their business out here, for sure. Have you ever met little baby? Been around him. <laughs> I definitely was around him before. I was, I was I've been outside. Uh yeah. I definitely seen I definitely seen him lose his chain before. I definitely seen somebody take his chain when well, they took they snatched the charm off his necklace. Uh, take me through the night. Shit, uh we at the spot. We kicking it. Where were you guys at? Vegas? We was in Vegas. We was in Vegas for sure, and um, I ain't gonna say my homie name who I was with because I don't want him to come under scrutiny. You know what I'm saying? But the video is out there, and you will see me on the video, point blank period. You feel me? Um, him and this guy was posted up. The walk past, snatched his that baby charm, snatched it off his neck, snatched it, boom, got up out of there. Nothing happened to the man at all, bro. He Nothing happened to the man. He didn't have security or anything? He had people with him, bro. He had people with him, but nobody did. I didn't see nobody do anything. I seen dudes snatch the chain and get up out of there, and I seen them posting it on Instagram after that, saying we're not playing with none of these rappers or doing all of that type of activity. Now, there's rumors saying that that guy who did that is dead now, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know how true that is, but I definitely seen him. In the club, he came in with that baby chain, and he ain't leave with it, bro. I can tell you that. Seen it. And you type this video in, you going to see me in that on that video. So You weren't working that night? I was just kicking it with my homie. I wasn't working. I'm chilling, bro. I was kicking it that night. I was not working. Well, what would have happened if you would have been working? That chain wouldn't have got tucked for sure. You wouldn't even better get close. No way that's going to happen. That's rule number one, bro. If you were a rapper, bro, if that rapper get his chain took, that's going to affect his money big time. As a rapper, that ends careers, bro. Like If you a rapper, you get your chain took, your career is going to go down after that, bro. Look how many rappers. Look at Trill Sammy. Look at Shy Glizzy. It's countless names, bro. They got that chain took, it was over after that. Because, bro, you a rapper, you supposed to be invincible. You got to move like the president. You talking all this big, tough shit. You, you just speaking your life on the song. You feel me? So if somebody able to push up on you and get your chain, your credibility take a hit. Now they wipe that shit under the rug, nice. But the video is out there. And on that video, you're gonna see me, so yeah. I seen that. <laughs> on the guy. Saint it. Not seen, saint. Now I, I guess there was a situation with uh, Rocky Fresh. He was performing in Chicago. Uh, some guys came through trying to get at him. So that's what I was talking about when Dan Folger had grabbed the bottle. But it, now that situation, they would downplay things, bro, like they, because they're not in the street. So a lot of times they wouldn't really know how much danger they was in sometimes, bro. So sometimes, you know, I would just pull up like, man, like, I'm going to have to be here, bro, because you my mans. And, like, people wanted that MMG chain, bro. You never seen him wear it. He knew people wanted that chain, bro. You never really seen Rocky with that MMG chain. 
people wanted that change. Like when Lil B got beat up, after that, I was with him. After Lil B got beat up, bro, I was with him, bro. Like, cause he, he, I should have been with him before that. But somebody get punched in their face, bro, and they get embarrassed. Like, that shit hurt his career. Like, when he was fighting PNB, rocking them, he could have had me right there, bro. They don't want to pay the fee, though. They don't want to pay that cheese. Cause, you know, rap don't really pay as well as people think it pay. You see guys on private jets and all that, but they label is paying for that. They see us on the private jet, we paying for that. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference. Like, people be want to think about, think about it, bro. If you sign a record deal, they the label owns all of this shit you making. Your money come from shows. And if you want a 360, you got to split the show money. So how is they getting all of this money? Of course, you got to be a hustler and stuff like that. But, bro, it, it ain't what people think it is, for sure. The labels be paying for them to fly on them jets. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's if we was if us three right here was to go to Chicago right now one way, it's twenty two thousand. If you a popping rapper, bro, if you going to the club, the max you finna get is thirty. Bro, how many rappers can fill up a stadium? Three, four at the most, and that's with a whole lineup of people. So like the labels make this make it look like these guys getting a lot of money. Like you feel me? You see Ari right here, icy because he hustled. Bro. You feel me? He get money in the field. A lot of guys don't do that. So it's just like it's 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 a major difference in what's going on out here, bro. And people don't really understand that. They don't really understand that, bro. Well, I guess you had a situation in L.A. over a C.K. hoodie. <laughs> yeah, this was yesterday, man. So my homie. We hop off the airport, bro. My homie got a Calvin Klein hoodie on. I guess some guys see the Calvin Klein hoodie and they take offense to that. This is a C and a K on there. They take offense to this. You feel me? So, you know, we had a little standoff with them. We had to explain, like, look, we from Chicago, bro. This is just a Calvin Klein hoodie. Now, mind you, he got a Chicago White Sox hat on also. I guess that's the Rolling 60s hat. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we respect y'all politics out here, man. We just trying to be fly. Like, we ain't trying to disrespect y'all, how y'all coming. Nothing like that, you feel me? And it got a little tense because it's like, all right, now, you know, we them real boys, but we ain't really trying to have no problems with nobody. You feel me? We not taking off no hoodies or nothing. We not, we not turning our hat backwards. We not tucking in our jewelry or nothing like that. You feel me? So like whatever it's gonna have to be, it's just gonna have to be. But we was able to to reach a we, we was able to make that smooth that situation out though. Cause well, in Chicago, it's not like that, bro. Like ain't nobody going off no clothes or nothing like that, bro. Like it's it's way more um it's it's it's, it's way more violent, bro. Like it's 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 way more advanced i would say like it ain't no really politicking like that like where we from like we know who our ops is when we see you it's that for you if they see you wherever you at is that like it ain't no hey where you from it ain't none of that bro it ain't no banging on nobody it ain't none of that so when we come out here we like what you talking about bro <laughs> you feel me? it's just a hoodie but for them it's way more serious than that so you know we couldn't really, I couldn't believe that. That's what it's a Calvin Klein. I mean, that's a CK on it. And he got the 60s hat on. What y'all on? Like, bro, that's a Sox hat, bro. Like, we from Chicago, bro. Like, we just out here getting our money and we gone. But they ended up calling some of, they older homies. And we was able to politic that way and smooth that out. But that's why I like it out here, though, because in Chicago, it ain't none of that. You can't call nobody. Somebody, we, we finna kill each other right here, and whoever make it out, make it out. Out here, you can really get some politics going and like and, and work around situations. So that's why I, I like it out here, bro. Like you can, you you can work stuff out way better, bro. Cause it's more structure. You feel me? Like they big homies hold weight. You feel me? Like you go against the program, they coming for you. Where we come from, ain't no such thing as a DP. Ain't no disciplinary action, nothing. That ain't that ain't happened since the 90s, really. Early, in early to the 90s, I'd say. You not finna DP nobody. Boy, it's gonna be a shootout. 
It'll be a shootout so fast, bro. You know how I many shootouts we've been in, bro? We blessed. If I got a tatted on me, bro, I've been in more shootouts than niggas been on dates <laughs> on the gas. For sure, for sure. For sure, bro. Is there anything else? Any any other stories or anything else you want to share before we get out of here? I got some more stories, but I gotta I gotta check I gotta I gotta check my, my mama got all my NDAs, bro. I gotta check that first. Cause man, I, I ain't trying to get sued. Do NDAs all NDAs expire or just some of them? All of them expire. Some of them might be fifty years. You know what I'm saying? Some of them might be five years. But all of them have an expiration date though, for sure. For sure. That's why you will see certain people like on their deathbed start saying certain stuff. Like, okay, well, either it expired or y'all can't prosecute me because I'm finna die. You know what I'm saying? But the ones I signed got expiration dates. And after May 11th, if you don't pay me my account, yeah, it's gonna be that for you too. And you know who I'm talking about. Stop playing. You know how we get it. So yeah, whatever. On bro. Shout out phone now. Well, I appreciate you, man. Uh, you know, you had some really dope stories. Uh, I got some more for you too, bro. On oh, bro, bro. I thank you. Let me thank you for letting me come up here, bro. I appreciate it a lot. Oh man. On the guy. My pleasure, man. Yes, sir. I've been a big supporter. I've been a fan of, the, of you for a long time, bro. So it's cool to get to see you. <laughs> on the gas, on the gas. I said you was rapping too, bro. You was a, uh, you was a I nice was, rapper, bro. Oh, thank you, man. You was on there rapping. I was like, all right. It's been a while, but yeah, I for should sure. do my thing. For sure. Go download that boss talk, man. Follow your boy, bighomie.cc, man. Shout out Cam Capone. We in here. We out of here. Love. That's what it is. Yes, sir. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.